All right. <clears throat> Let's be live. And it seems that we are live. Okay. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hello. <laughs> so, as usual, we have the chat open. I'm here with um, Francois Razaric from the Godot community, and we will be working on the game Harvester, the one you can see on screen. So for people who weren't there last time, this is a free and open source game, once again. And uh, this one is showcasing AI, procedural generation, and soon shaders. So right now uh, it looks a bit like slow with um, some art improvements that could be made. We do have a nice mini map. Um, and this is a space game where you really have uh, a lot of AI built into even character movement. That is, it's using steering behaviors at the moment. So you can move in orbit and have some uh, acceleration, deceleration, inertia, even docking is automated in the game. So the goal of the game is that you mine resources, you go bring them back to the base, upgrade your ship, enemy pirates uh, start to um, start to appear. We will have two factions in there. In any case, it's right there on github slash gdquest slash go to game harvester and um you can go download it look at the the code reuse any of the code in your project start the project as well in the top right over there and this helps to get some visibility about it and i'll leave the floor to francois for a second uh yeah uh, basically uh, when I, we coded the steering AI fra the framework to uh, make it easier to code a graceful movement without uh, expensive like uh, e uh, issues like uh, A star, which can be slow, especially on very large maps. Uh, instead, uh, this is meant to be uh, AI movement that works on a more frame by frame level. So it calculates. I want to go there, that's my target, so I want to seek, pursue, evade, or flee from uh, that target, so it'll calculate uh, an amount of acceleration that it desires, and it's up to you to apply it, and whether uh, it should, you should cap it or not, so really it's pretty flexible. It's based especially on uh, the Java-based libgdx uh, frameworks, AI framework, which is quite good. And yeah, that's where it's Harvest has been at. And though nowadays, since we got most of the features in, there's still some stuff to come out. But uh, we started to work on uh, a bit of a visual sprucing up since the graphics right now are currently a bit uh, basic, we'll say. <laughs> yeah, I'm showcasing um, the steering AI demos in the meantime. So you can see some, while well, lacking maybe some visualization in some of them, um, we'll have to add these things to show, like the helpers to see where the AI is going and those kinds of things. But you can yeah. see some of the stuff we have. So the kind of smooth AI movement you can have, like a turret that follows the player, but you can see it's really nice and smooth. Right now it's with, let's say, basic art, but that's to really showcase the behavior. Anyway. We are going to work today on a few new features. Redesigning some menus, so I'll put the menus at the bottom. Uh, I'm going to do base gameplay to start with. Control scheme, uh, maybe making the ship feel faster first, making it easier to hit targets with the gun, reviewing and improving the control scheme, and then uh, some debug tools as well. Uh, that might be interesting to do just one or two today. And finally, we'll move on to the UI. We're here for an hour and a half at least. Let's get started. I'm going to show you uh, something that Francois has been working on yesterday and today. Um, it's in the Plasma branch. There you go. Yep. No, I'm on the wrong repository. Where is it? Right here. No. 
Um, I'm gonna go plasma branch. There we go, and open it to show you. I should really make the game scene the first one in my in my game. So is it easy to see? So the the projectiles in the current game. Wait, I'm going to open the game scene and move that copy of the editor down. You, I'm going to move you up. So I have um, my shell there. And here I have the working version of the, ah, but yeah, with Git checkout, I think it's going to check out that version, of course, as well. Okay, I'll show you in a second, like the, um, the other version. So there you go. Um, we have projectiles. I, they, they stop a bit here. I don't know if you'll be able to see too easily in video. It might be easier if you shoot near the station. So that, uh, yeah, you can see the, so now you have hot plasma, like deformation. It's going to deform the, the view and those kinds of things. And note that while working on tutorial series to, to do shaders as well, uh, that will be text-based this time around. Much, much easier to, to maintain them, especially text-based with new versions of Godot. But hopefully you can see how you get deformation and screen effects, but only localized, like masked. Um, so there we go. That's going to be one weapon in the game. And now I will go back to the master branch and, uh, well, then open the project in Godot and there we go. First, I'm going to get started with the player gun. So there's a, a gun scene. Is it the gun or the player gun that manages? The gun is just a regular... The yeah, gun okay, it has, has the base the code code you need to fire. The player ship or the uh, pirate ship is the one that decides when to fire it. Yeah, I do have a player gun. Uh, see, ah, okay, it's because... Okay, so it inherits from the gun right now and then I want to add some features to uh, extends gun let's see yeah I want to add some stats to the gun so that it doesn't shoot straight only and maybe to make it easier to hit the enemies uh, hi there thanks for joining everyone so I'm gonna go to harvester and uh, play gun so I'll be coding in Emacs, um, but this is GD script code, right? Will you upload this video after stream? It should be up on YouTube afterwards, yeah. Yeah, it's the always automatically automatically stored on YouTube. Okay, so I'm gonna open uh, gun.gd and I want to open gun uh, stats gun. Um, <clears throat> we just added yesterday a stat system that so uh, this class doesn't look like much i'll probably if you're interested i can start doing tutorials and well more a mix between tutorials and code overviews because it's it's very hard it can't be a beginner friendly tutorial the kinds of things we do on these projects in production it starts to be a fairly complex code so um I'm going to show you stats.gd for a second. Um, and we have this class, it's fully documented, but that is a stat system that can work for an RPG, for character progression, these kinds of things. So if you're interested, tell me and I can do a video to run through the code and the logic and explain why we do that, because um, it might not be obvious at first. Uh, window, can I kill a window? No, is it D? Which key was it already? Control D. W. <laughs> no, oh, you're, oh, I'm in Emacs. That's not how it works. It's Control C, <laughs> Control K, Control A, Control D. Um, no, it's uh, Control W, D, and not Control W, X, like I was trying to do. D for delete. Uh, sometimes X for removing one letter, for example, is X. I'm going to do one last thing. For the setup, it's put keymon on. 
So just people, I, I'm sorry for one thing, is that I'm quite tired, so um, uh, might be a bit uh, difficult that stream. I actually dislocated my shoulder this morning, waking up, yeah. and well, I put it back in, so it's fine. But uh, it's no, a little bit painful. <laughs> but like literally. Right, I'll open also the door, uh, really hot. This is Costa Rica, so I want to take off my shirt, but... Um, and I, now I need to increase the luminosity. All right, so I want the gun to have some more stats. It's going to have... Uh, an angle, like a spread. So I'm gonna go to the gun's uh, stats here. I have quite a bit of glare on the screen now. Let me see if I do that. <coughs> yeah, it's less bad. All right, um, so I'm going to add a spread uh, variable here. And spread will be an angle. Uh, do we do it in radians or in angle? Uh, uh, GSAI uses radians, but okay. Uh, so radians, I guess, yeah. will be uh, the way by I usually do it is that on export, I use degrees and I convert it afterwards, so that way it's easier for okay. uh, yeah anyone to use it to visualize in their head, I guess, if they're not used to radians. Okay, uh, a spread of uh, let's say forty degrees. There sure. we go, and. Uh, I'm going to re uh, add a getter function for that. So the getter function is there to encapsulate the stats so that when you look for the stats you can access on a given node. Like you, you don't have to use them, but having these getter function makes it so you get auto completion for them. Um, otherwise the, the stat system works, you just write down the stats and that's it. You have a stat system where you can add modifiers through equipments, um, you have automatically, well, it, it does quite a few things, but that'll be a topic for another video. So now I have my spread. Uh, I'm going to take a spread. So it's going to be a float. Uh, well, I guess I don't need that. I'm, it's going to be stats that get start. Ah, get spread, of course, uh, because I added that. Um, I would have someone who, now I'm scared to know what that pi out of three would have looked as a value. It just becomes a floating point value. So it would be uh, pi divided by three is one point something. 1.0447. Yeah, don't worry about the, the shoulder. Uh, you want to know how I dislocated my shoulder this morning. I woke up, I was sleeping on like facing down and I did a sharp movement just waking up. So I dislocated my, my left arm uh, boxing in the past. So then it can go out much more easily. And uh, then I just had to, yeah, to move to put it back in. But it was the first time for my, my partner seeing uh, the when the shoulder is not in the slot and it's a bit down the arm. <laughs> and she was like, oh, this is disgusting. Oh, yeah. Horrible, horrible. <laughs> And then I put it back in. I was like, no, it's fine. It's back in. Well, to be fair, it is disgusting. Horrible, horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember one thing when I um, when it first happened is that people were like, oh, this must be so painful. Oh, it's horrible. They couldn't look at it. And I was like, no, it's fine. It doesn't hurt. Um, started hurting after. I mean, we were really warm. It was in a fight. So the the thing is you break something and... On the moment, it doesn't feel too, too bad. Oh yeah, you're still pumping with adrenaline. adrenaline. Yeah. Uh, so the projectile rotation, spawn orientation plus red. Um, so projectile rotation, I need to go see the projectile class. Uh, no, rotation is going to be the, the one in radiance, right? Uh, 
yeah, I think because it uses angle to vector two based on rotation. So let's see, GSAI utils. Aten two, yeah, Aten works with radians, right? Uh, well, uh, yeah, it does radians. Okay. <clears throat> um, and that should be it. There's nothing more. I excuse me with that sound. I, I don't know if you guys can hear in the in the mic that they are doing constructions as well. It doesn't have a set type. It returns a float. What are you saying? All right. With our. All right. So uh, now I have to add plus. Um, uh, 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 um, uh, random. And it's going to be minus spread divided by two, spread divided by two. All right. So now it's not firing straight, but it really doesn't look like much. So the things we are going to do, we're going to make projectile as the plasma shot, plasma shot player. Ah, it's a kinematic body 2D, cool. All right, and then we're going to make the sprite bigger. So I'm going to do this quick and dirty to get started. Boom, 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 boom. Ah, now it's firing plasma shots, right? <laughs> Make your shots bigger, guys. And ladies, and I think it, yeah, the game, the only thing is the way it's developed, I think the hot reload doesn't work as well. So, all right, it's like the way the plasma shots look. Um, do we have something that looks like a ball in the game? Uh, the uh, coin. I added, I added one. Um, yeah, but in the shader branch, right? Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Maybe we can fire Xbox buttons. There you go. <laughs> All right. Rotate it around, and uh, where is um, modulate? I don't know if I can get a decent color, but let's see if this works. Hello, everyone. Who's training? Yeah, now it doesn't look like much, but okay. We're going to fire uh, Xbox A buttons. <coughs> wow. Plasma balls, like it's literally firing Xbox buttons. So, um, we're going to greatly lower the cooldown. So, uh, stats on the gun. We're going to start with a cooldown of 0.1. And I have to change the upgrade value. Now I'm shooting what I'm shooting. Ta -da! Ah, this is, this is firing bullets. Um, so I want to change the base gun to be a bit more satisfying, as you can see. Uh, I'm going to reduce the scale a bit again. Then we'll add a, quickly add a, a ball or something and change the collision shape. But first, I want it to look nice, let's say. Okay, so point 0.2 should be fine as the... Okay. Now it's not enough, it needs to be faster. And the bullets need to travel faster as well, I think. So is it in projectile? What's its speed? Uh, okay, so one thing I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do, um, well, the thing is the speed of the bullet should not necessarily change in the game. Like for balance, it's going to be a bit too difficult. The base damage though, the projectile has some damage and adds the one of the, um, of the gun, so I'm not sure. I think I'll, I'll remove that. 
Okay, another thing, what do you think of having, instead of having a, a timer on the bullets, having a range? Uh, to know so exactly how far it travels. Amount of cooldown, basically? Uh, no, it's it's small. Like right now, we define by speed and duration. Um, I find that range saying the bullet dies after 1,500 pixels, for example. Um, oh, yeah, you mean the firing range? Yeah. Yeah, I think it could work. Okay. Um, And it's going to be uh, 1,200, just so that it basically it gets out of the screen and then you, you don't see it anymore. Um, and so the timer is going to be, uh, I'm going to have to set the lifetime. So speed, uh, no fire range divided by speed. So timer dot, what is it? It's lifespan timer dot wait time is equal to fire range divided by speed and we're going to start it it's auto start i guess there we go that way um when we increase the duration of the timer uh, when we increase the um, the range huh. interesting ah yeah when we're moving it's mostly so that i can say travel very fast, but only for so many pixels. And uh, I could say uh, 1 600, let's say, and for the fire range, we're going to go 1 5. Well, essentially, I could also add a script that deletes the bullets when they are outside the screen. But it needs to be a bit farther than the outside outside of the screen. Yeah. Yeah, right now, when you're traveling after the bullets, the problem is that your speed also plays a role, so I really need to do that. Okay, I'm gonna go to the project and use a visibility notifier then. So guys, I'm improving the gameplay, but as you can see at the same time, I need to go and uh, fix, like the visibility, for example, is quite important in that case. Seeing bullets die in the middle of the screen is not extremely professional. So I'm going to remove the life span timer and use visibility notifier 2d so um i'm going to make sure i saved here and go in the go to script editor to replace lifespan timer we're going to remove it disconnect well instead of that we're rather going to search and replace lifespan timer for visibility notifier replace all and it's going to be visibility notifier 2d there you need to set the type to that visibility notifier 2D to get auto completion. So, visibility notifier.connect, we want to connect what? It has uh, viewport exited. And I think, let's double check, but that should be one of its screen exited and viewport exited. Uh, I think we want to use the screen self on lifespan timeout so uh or if you I'm chase just... it down what might happen hmm? if you chase it down and it's suddenly gone <laughs> <laughs> um yeah that should that should be fine let's see if it works if i chase it down now they keep traveling until they reach the end of the screen so then we can also have a range on the projectiles to make them more flexible, but okay. Um, what else do we need? The range is still good, but um, but well, we'll see a bit a bit later. So I'm going to add a range property on uh, stats gun. Yeah, if it's unused, I don't want to have it though. Okay, so the spread, we're going to make it fairly small. So we're going to have a weapon that fires mostly straight, that fires quickly. So uh, 14 by default, let's try. And that does low damage, 
like 4, then the damage of the projectile is going to be 0, but it's going to it gets the damage uh, from the gun itself. So it needs to be injected so some damage. Um, or you can have some base, yeah, we can keep the base damage for the projectile, I guess. Uh, no, I don't know. The idea is that you can have a special type of ammunition that's going to have a bonus, right? Uh, how does that work if you connected the signal screen? So the bullet has to go outside the screen. Uh, now the question is, what is considered the screen? We can see that. That's why I was hesitant between the viewport and the screen. So visibility not fire 2D. Um, screen enter enters the screen, exits the screen, and enters or exits a viewport view. The thing is the viewport can be smaller or larger than the screen. Um, when I was showing the shader at first, like the heat deformation shader, the um, the shader's viewport might be smaller, like it, it's just to render the trail that is on the screen. So it's inside of the screen. So my understanding is that screen in that case doesn't mean the display, but it means the window, right? So the projectile gets outside the window, it disappears. We can check in the um, uh, remote debugger, like the remote scene tree. Okay, unfold. Uh, batch unfold doesn't work in that mode. Okay, that's unfortunate. Do you know where the um, projectiles spawn? They stay as a child of the player? No, you were reparenting them, They're right? In object registry. Object registry. It's an auto load. Okay, they don't queue free. Thank you for your help. It turns out it was the wrong signal. I don't know what the screen is then. Uh, oh no, the signal name was wrong. Screen exited. Uh, now let's see, because the, the visibility not fire normally, what it does is it has a, a box and it's when that box is outside the screen, right, completely, then it, uh, it stops. So there you go, I'll fire a few, remote tree, and we'll go to the object registry and we do not have any shots anymore, like they disappear as they go. Perfect. Um, Jorge, yeah, uh, we've been working on a um, mode for Emacs, so it's uh, there, GD Quest, Emacs, GD Script mode, and there's more coming like the language server support. You can find it here. All right, so you can see it there with the install instructions and <coughs> everything. All right, uh, what else do we do for the gun? I guess well, good for now. Anything else? Of course, I want more recall. I want now. Um, I want a different shape. So we're going to fire up Inkscape, and we're going to make uh, some gun thing. So how do we do our thing now? That's the question. Well, is your branch ready to merge, uh, Francois? Or the plasma uh, shot? I was thinking of adding to it, but right now, yeah, it's, it'd be, it would be workable. Okay. Then you can work on master as, uh, as well for the improvement and we okay. can do that. Uh, no. Okay. Should I merge it or? I'll I'll merge it because I'm right here. If you have anything to okay. push, tell me. You do it, and then I'll I'll merge. Uh, let me check. Uh, what change in it? Okay, I'm going to kill it. No, not really. So you can merge it. Okay. So I'll go here. Uh, I'm going to save my stuff. Plus my shot, player projectile, player gun. It's weird how sometimes Godot adds some, like remove some blank lines or add some blank lines to some things in the comments. I don't like that it does that. Especially with inherited scenes, it does those kinds of things. 
Yeah. Okay. It's it, it basically rewrites the file using whatever syntax it, it wants instead of merging the syntax. Yeah. Okay. So. Hmm. What's the problem? Conflict. No, it's the editor that doesn't want to open from here. Is there a problem with the workspaces? It's weird. I don't have another window. Well. Ah, okay, I see. Emacs server. I must have deleted it for debugging purposes uh, earlier. There we go. Um, yeah, because it tries to open a new uh, client. E Emacs works. You can really add tons of features to it, and then it's it can slow down. But the way it, it works is you put only one instance in memory. Uh, so you only load it once and then you can have a server running and you can open files instantly because it, it just stays in memory. So it opens new windows, it adds to the existing windows and those kinds of things. Uh, try to use the camera 2D feature, test that viewport versus screen thing. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, for, for now it's not too important because I checked that uh, the... Um, projectiles got deleted and they really get out of the view before they are deleted so that's fine by me we're going to say uh, improve the gun ah maybe uh, wait guns feel no because right now it's using the a button from the xbox controller <laughs> LSP available for Emacs. Yes, but uh, yes, but it's currently the thing is you need the latest version of Godot to do that, like latest master, and um, it's currently yeah, when replace the, uh, the TCP IP instead of web sockets. I think. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, okay, so I'm going to push that and then I'm going to merge your branch, which is feature plasma projectiles. And we have some merge conflicts, of course. So, guys, you're going to see how when you work with a team, you fix conflicts. I'm going to use uh, the differential division, uh, the distortion emitter. Uh, I need to keep it. How do I keep both already? Ah, but the fire range we're not using right now. Okay, so the visibility notifier. Uh, I think I have a key to keep both, right? Ignore white space, copy. Combine the regions. So if I do plus. Will the no. stream be able for watching it first then? Yeah, YouTube automatically uploads it to the channel. So it should be available once uh, the stream is finished. Hmm. Okay, so that's fine. Keep the visibility notifier here. Uh, we're going to remove the lifespine timer. And this, if collision, if not dead, and collision, emit damage, the collider, those kinds of things are good. Um, I think I would do that if dead, return. Hey, why do you not restart the block? Okay, good. Um, that is true. Uh, actually, I think you have a function like is queued free or is queued for deletion, something like that. Uh, I have a boolean dying on uh, the emitters, but not on anything else. Unless you mean yeah. you as in uh, Godot. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, Godot. And okay. um, that's because in the projectile class, you have an is that you've added a is that thing. So physics process, uh, your return from physics process. But the thing that you can do is uh, not do that. And on lifespan timeout, you do set physics process, uh, set process physics, sorry, I think it is. And to false here, so it will stop physics process. Uh, let's see. So that way uh, I can do this. Anything that says dead I have a property up there. No, we don't. All right, so delete these lines. Then I think the reason I didn't do set physics process false is that so I would keep going uh, even if it's uh fading out it just wouldn't collide like it lose it lost its kinetic energy or something uh i see um, though if though if i improve it to have like a, an impact flash or something instead then we can replace mm -hmm. that then i see uh or replace it with an emitter where it like fizzles out into like particles or something yeah i see Okay, should do. Uh, and so then I'm going to change that to is dead. All right. Uh, what else? The visibility not far is fine here. We have it. Um, any other questions? No. So. Um, to increase the screen's brightness maybe a bit like really the the sun is uh making things a bit harder to see okay uh what next is has the sound stopped like the music wait it's not playing i don't think there was ever any music or at least i'm not uh, oh that's because i'm on discord right Instead yeah of, uh... <laughs> yeah 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 um yeah no the thing i was saying i have to check in godot so this is the projectile and we're going to close the other tabs um and so uh is queued ah yeah but you wait for the twin to complete to queue free because you have is queued for del deletion instead i see um it's the only time you tween thread material set okay so uh, tween dot is active instead of is dead then we return or if collision and not rather and not tween dot is active that way we can remove is dead okay uh well good with that so let's see if it plays on there are some more uh-huh there are some more conflicts maybe I don't have conflicts anymore, I think. Okay, and then what's happening? What's here? Facts, projectiles, remote map, remote distort, and player camera. What? Wait, 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 wait. Ah, uh, the joys of working with Git. <laughs> What's the problem? <coughs> right, maybe I shouldn't have merged like that. I'm going to abort the merge. 
and restart it. So bb uh, no merge plus my projectiles and we'll go back to the aha uh -huh. aha uh -huh, I see uh, I want to take their stage and then here I'm going to take uh, not ours this one I really need to do manually because problem is like in edif here I take B it's fine um, there I want to take both but I don't remember how you do that with edif swap variants show registry compare regions no 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 Manipulate, refine, update, date the diff regions, combine. Normally it should be plus like that. No? Well, I have to be there. I don't manage to combine them. Um, okay, so let's Our try again. Just fast forward. Uh master to the branch or something no it's fine i was just trying to to make a change so it's really fine uh variant a so visibility not fire that connect it's going to be screen exited to um i'll add a uh, die function If collision and not tween dot is active, um, not going to do that because we start the tween down there. Fade function, I think I'll make it because it's not really meant to be called from the outside. So okay. Okay, um, is that you remove and what else do we have? Screen exited, we want to call die. Um, okay, so right now what I'm doing is merging a uh, high game endeavor. We still have to do that collab with uh, Henrique and other people to do contributions on I don't know if you were I think we we talked about contributing to Godot itself like to the engine you're in the conversation or maybe in one of these conversation to do like um, be several doing a YouTube collab I think this this would be interesting to people seeing different perspectives on how we get to contribute to the code and giving people videos about how you can contribute to Godot um, to the engine. That's something I, I like to do. Okay, I think and that also is fine. Bug, engine bugs, that's always fun. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> I, I hear a pinch of sarcasm in your voice when you say that, but I do not know why. It's <laughs> <laughs> just when I was trying to figure out why the enum comments for doc strings were appearing for the line below instead of the line above. It took me quite a while to figure out why. Okay, yeah. Uh, plasma shot. Ah, okay, because you made a new scene for the, the plasma shot, but still using uh, class name projectile. Okay, I'm going to add a uh, visibility not fire 2D. And um, visibility notifier is going to be well. I'm going to have you last, my friend. Not that you're the least important, but wow! Well, this is some plasma trail here. <laughs> no, I mean, now it's firing a bit fast. If you saw for the plasma, how did you? Uh, is it there's a glow in the sprite or? Yeah, the sprite see? is uh, it's it's baked into the pixels. But ah. I use a shader to control ah. the two layers. So I can adjust the fall off of the front shader, tint the back, make it more intense, that sort of thing. Okay.
Um, so you use two channels separate? How did you no, do that? It's it's one channel. It's just it's rendered twice in the shader. Oh, okay. It's just that one's modified. Uh, Where is the the material in question on the sprite? On the sprite itself, yeah. Let's look at that. That's interesting. Wow. It's sort of a high performance uh, version of a glow. Instead of creating a glow, you just want to control the current glow. It's mobile friendly, I guess, you say. Yeah. That's really interesting. Um, that's part of the things we should definitely have uh, cover in the... In the... Shader, uh, shader series, yeah, yeah. So people, ju just so you know, we're making... Um, so we've done quite a bit of uh, code on free software projects. Now we're looking to do something, find a good balance between making um, products so we can keep funding our projects, uh, crowdfunding again. So we're preparing the next campaign. We might have a sponsored uh, job as well. Yeah, they look really nice, to be honest. Um, and and so we're going to make tutorials like series, and I think that we will... Um, so there will be products paid for, but we will try to to make um, also maybe a, a few sample tutorials out of that. Yeah, the, the shot definitely needs to be a bit bigger. Yeah. First, that should make it easier to... Wow, that makes multiple trails. Each one creates a, a, a new animator, I guess. Yeah, create a viewport for each. Oh. It's a... Uh, dis Internet is disconnecting? And now the only thing it displays are the emitters, so... Okay. So in the end, you end up with a black and white mask of uh, kind of fading trails. I see. All right. Which is the pond that should hit? I guess it's the outer edge, and we're going to increase the size of the visibility notifier. Okay. Ah, it's so nice. We do need some. That's uh, Henry K. We're counting on you to have some effect. Like when we hit, we need something for the plasma ball, like explosions of particles to hide a bit the thing fading and disappearing. But yeah, honestly, that's a kind of temporary thing instead of just popping out of existence. Yeah, honestly, they look good though. With that glow and all. Um, Maybe for polishing a slight animation on the glow could do could do yeah, something. Yeah, I do have but... an animation player on it to, to kind of pulse, but it's kind of subtle, especially if they go that fast. Yeah, it's funny, uh, people. You can see a uh, way out of this world. Like we have a viewport in the viewport, so when I pan the camera, it's changing in the viewport as well. The view. You're a wizard, um, uh, as a. Big Dev is saying in the chat. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to... Take all the credit. Godo did a lot of the work for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, is... No, cheese is not open. Cool. I was worried that it was eating the webcam and all. Because I don't have the, the video feedback. I keep the chat on, guys. So that's why. On my uh, end, it looks like you're still there. So. Yeah. Uh, one thing I want to add was a script, just a simple script that says uh, is engine dot editor hint uh, visible off. <laughs> hmm. uh, which node is it? I can add it quickly. Uh, on post process layer game view. It's just so that it's not as disorienting to just look at the uh, main game scene and the editor. Um, it's going to be tool. Uh, if engine.editor hint visible equals false, and we're good. 
Okay, I'll save that. And right now I've, I saved it in the default location. So move to, uh-huh, it's not UI. It's not, we're lacking something like, uh, I don't know where to put it. it, would be world, but VFX? I do have a VFX folder. Yeah, where would you put it? At pass process it's game view? Just, oh, all right. Um, yeah, basically just at the root of yeah, the VFX, I guess. Okay. There it is. And it's not visible anymore. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to comment that. Let's see. Emacs, where are you, my friend? Uh, so, what happened here? I probably slide OK. OK, OK. Uh, all right, and now uh, remove. Uh, make uh, game uh, pass process okay push to master so now you have the plasma balls and those things I have to say uh, so I need to check is there a way to spawn enemies from the start what can I do to quickly debug uh... that if you go in game initializer, you can just tell it to uh, to spawn a pirate group, basically, right from the get-go. Okay, uh, camera setup, spawn station, uh, so on spawner, pirate spawn. Or maybe even world. Either way, it's one of them. Register map, world object dot append. Yeah, I don't see a public method for that. So the station spawner. Uh, Pirate calls them. Yeah, let's go see on the world node. Um, Remove iron, find freshest iron cluster. The freshest. <laughs> 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 we have fresh code, guys. Um, okay, yeah, so you call pirate spawner dot spawn pirate group. Then. And so either spawner. in setup or in ready, either way. Okay. Why do you spawn the the pirates? I don't see pirate spawner used. It's uh, the game. The world connects to upgrade choice made, and then spawns uh. Uh, by calling pirate spawner spawn pirate group function. Uh, that's a tongue twister. Pirate spawner spawn pirate group function. <laughs> Uh, pirate spawner. Okay, and needs choice. What does choice does? Ah, it's not used. Uh, it's because of the signal, I guess. World radius. And world. Okay, so I need to pass it the... Let's go zero. Uh, spawn radius, I don't know how much is it. Let's look at the That's world. A, there's a world radius export on world, pretty sure. Ah, okay, world radius. Uh, do we have world dot world radius? Uh, and it was the last one. Yeah, we re really need to add completion for everything. When, like, for, for me at least it'll be, it'd be easier. Um, and we get the world. Okay, I need to pass in the world. Well, if world has world radius, how about just passing the world object as a reference? Is it better to pass the parameter? Uh, well, I guess we're passing world anyway, aren't we? Yeah, so probably should just pass world instead of Passing the parameter and telling him to use the public property. Yeah, I'm not managing to spawn the pirates. I'm not getting an error, but on ready and uh, maybe here it's too it's too early. So they might be uh, spawning near an asteroid actually. So probably the freshest cluster. Okay. The freshest cluster. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's funny. <laughs> 
Just notice, I think we had to add the uh, else visible true on the uh, game view script, because otherwise it, the uh, the trails aren't spawning. Uh, ah, yeah, because it gets saved. Okay. Visible is equal not engine dot editor hint. Yeah, that makes more sense. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, oh, I see the pirates now coming to the asteroids now. You see uh, how, how the game works? Uh, that's interesting. So the pirates were traveling. Okay, I'm still having trouble hitting them. Wow, they fire the plasma balls as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's amazing, the spawning. It's like they spawn, but a bit of far from the asteroids, so you can see them coming to the asteroids on the map. Yeah, so I didn't want them to just pop, especially not around top of you or something. They keep firing when you're dead. They're really aggressive. Uh, hi Otto, thank you for for um, the kind words. So where are they, these cheeky pirates? Where is the freshest cluster? No, this is not fresh. Oh, over there. Yeah, it looked fresh. All right. Uh, okay, I've got to change the weapon on the, the pirates definitely. Uh, ex excuse me, people, but it, it's fun. I mean, w we've been working quite a lot on refactoring and those kinds of things. So seeing that for us, it's fun. <coughs> Um, okay, so I'm going to push that and, well, to commit that at least. Fix um, heat trails. Uh, but the enemies are completely overpowered in the game. So this uh, I'm going to keep around. Especially at this that flying speed. <laughs> um, I found I could at the previous firing speed I could fire them pretty well in precision mode. Yeah, precision mode I, I haven't used actually. That's the next thing I need to try as well. Ah, yeah, but the thing with precision mode is, okay, it it turns too slowly for me. And let's see, because now it really feels like, how do you do precision mode? Uh, you keep X down, and how do you fire? Uh, it's right, uh, oh, on the gamepad. Uh, you can toggle it on the gamepad. Otherwise, it's right mouse button on uh, that you hold down in the uh, in game. Okay. And it's a, so... it basically turns into a twin stick shooter. Yeah, the thing is twin stick shooter, it's really, in, in general, the principle is you, you can really instantly turn the character. Right now, turn speed is really too too slow, I think. Okay, there's not enough of speed difference. Ah, it's also that... Oh, you do die. It does... Okay, so the full game loop is working. Um, so you turn with the left stick. Okay, do we do the game, like we optimize it for the gamepad or for the keyboard and mouse? What do you think? I, I think it would be f more fun to play with the, the gamepad personally. I'm not sure. I mean, the option is there. Yeah, we need to add some, some fire. Um, <laughs> a bit of fire. Yeah, but um, fire is when you're like in precision mode. So precision mode, if I enter it, let's see on the map where is. Yeah, I need to to see some stuff. No, on the mouse, I need to keep the mouse right click down. One thing I'm thinking is that the controls are quite different, so the gameplay is actually different between the two schemes and. Um, but yeah, twin stick, it's, the, the right stick is really turning the character, like, gradually. 
-hmm. And I've had one issue where I was turning the stick one direction uh, and the character turned from like the other way around, like it takes the shortest angle, I guess. Yeah. So uh, it's a bit weird. Uh, it, it's hard for me to, to control in that case. Well, the base speed of the ship is a bit too slow. Um, what else do we have? So people, ju just for the explanation, I'm not only playing at the moment, but I'm really testing. Um, yeah, the plasma balls are really much weaker than, than they look. Um, yeah, it's just the controls are all too slow overall. The ship is hard to maneuver. It feels like it's a really slow and, um, how could you say? Yeah, a really slow vehicle. So if we decide that combat is something you have to avoid, right? We can also decide that in the game. But I'm thinking maybe simplifying the controls on the gamepad, you, the joystick, the left joystick is always going to move the ship forward and not just rotate it. Even though you can rotate with A and D, right, with the, the controller, I would not have to press A because it, it feels weird to press X a bit. I mean, while well, both probably experienced players and I don't know, we haven't talked about what the audience for the game was. I would try to make it accessible as a learning game. I mean, it's not particularly difficult, but what do you think? Yeah, um, it's sort of a mishmash between uh, my work on Void Space and Death War 3030, which sort of had both. Uh, uh, Void Space had the precision mode, and while it worked well with the mouse, we never really got to test it with the gamepad. So I guess now we're seeing the limitation there. And uh, in 3030 Death War, uh, Redux, they only have travel mode. Okay. Uh, but can they you... use accelerate with A, and then you rotate with the stick. I see. How do you duck? Oh, you use the D-pad. Yeah. Up on the D-pad. Okay, I'm not too fond of that either. Uh, yeah, because the thing is having the stick directly move. Because the thing with the stick is you have, if you pull the stick up or down, it doesn't do anything. And you have to go left and right, uh, which is a bit strange with a game pad for me it, it feels strange like controls so uh, oh by the way people I actually can use that I'm going to do this and I'm going to add the controls on OBS give me a second so you can see the so you can see the control so add where did I have it uh, oh, OBS supports gamepad controls Hmm? OBS supports gamepad controls. Uh, I have another program that does that. I had it set up. Where was it? Okay, I have the source here, it seems. Can you see the gamepad? Yes, you should be able. People at the internet. So that's why you can see my key presses. I'll put it. Where do I put that? Top left. Not well hide some of the screen, but now you can see my gamepad. It's a it's a fast project. That's pretty amazing. Uh, yeah, up on the D-pad to land. Same thing. It's a bit weird. I would. I don't know what would be best because in travel mode, then on the gamepad, you wouldn't necessarily be able to move back, right? You have precision mode already if you want to move back, so you could do mm -hmm. that. So I would remove B. I would remove A to travel forward and put R2 to shoot or RB, uh, the bumper, have different weapons maybe. And I don't know if you have a drone or the, the thing we have to think about is if we have drones, mining lasers and those kinds of things moving forward, uh, we might want and need to, to do some more stuff. Yeah. Maybe a context menu for some for something like you can hold down a button and then use a stick to kind of move to a selection. 
Yeah, UI could work. Quick, sw uh, quick weapon swap or deploy drone thing. Yeah. Uh, the map is Y. Okay. I've got that uh, written down. I'm going to take a second to get some coffee, people. Uh, let's do... Okay, I'll just heat up the coffee and I'm back. Okay. Sorry for having you wait. I'm back. We'll never forgive oh. you. <laughs> I mean, if there's not, if there's something you shouldn't forgive me, it's uh, being tired on stream. All right. So um, the base stats for the player's speed. So I'm gonna go to the player ship now and work on that. Um, so the player stats, the base one, I guess I can edit it from here, no problem. What is the max acceleration? Is it really 15? 15 is not in pixels, right? Uh, it should be in pixels. Is there so much inertia? Uh, part of it is probably the difference between uh, acceleration and velocity. Or speed, rather. So uh, the acceleration is only 15, but the max speed is a lot higher. Yeah, but it's 350, so the ship is really slow overall, I think. Uh, max speed, angular. Let's try. So um, a tip I've shared before, you want to do some debugging. You First thing you do, you double the values. Yeah, it doesn't feel fast still. Uh, let's see. So 800. Or you multiply the values by 10 or whatever. So you go too much first and then you crank back down. Uh, it also helps you to see... Um, no, it's still as slow. So maybe it's not using the stats at the moment. Let's Are double the stats check. plugged into the agent? When the I think I I replaced everything that was like everything that was being fed to the agent I replaced but yeah, maybe not there. okay player stats now here they are correct so gonna go to the player uh, it's done in the move state or in other states as well state machine okay nothing special so I'm going to close all the scripts and yeah anyway I removed all the properties on the players so you would get an error if the the stat was not accessed through the stats node mm -hmm. uh, I'm so glad Godot exists with Godot Krita Libris Sprite I don't know what that is but I imagine a, a null program as well uh, Linux Blender GIMP nah, nah. finally break into game dev on my potato laptop. Oh. I Libre see. Sprite is a bit like a sprite, but free. 
Is it a fork, uh, the old fork of ASPRITE? Because ASPRITE used to be um, under an open source license. Uh, fork of the latest, last GPL to be to remove a commit of ASPRITE. So yeah, it is. Okay, and no one took over then that project still. It's looking kind of un unupdated, yeah. Yeah, I see. Uh, all right, so acceleration max times reverse multiplier. I'm going to print them, I guess. Uh, print. One thing I can do is for property in uh, get property list. Uh, Aha, uh, uh -huh. did you know that you could do that, people? You can get all the properties on a node, so the variables, etc., then call the get function to access that value. And I forgot the last parentheses. I'm gonna run that. Cannot convert argument one from ah yeah I get I have to do property dot name property dot name ah no get yeah property dot name should be fine there we go and see the output here oh I could use the I'm stupid I could have used the debugger actually the remote tree so uh, drag linear QF reverse multiplier no. No, 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 it's not getting the stats. Hmm. Owner.stats.getAngularAccelerationMax. Mm-hmm. They are not being fed into, but I'm calling through the function. So it's in ready. It's waiting for the owner to be ready. So in the owner's ready function, hmm. I think okay, the I don't know. Lives on move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that, but okay. Breakpoint here. Shape. No, the values are correct in the stats object at least. Wait, wait, wait. The script variable. Quick question: Are you? Yes, I am. <laughs> That's the GD. Going to do a top-down nice. tutorial. My comment got cut off. I think we have a couple of those. <laughs> uh, Are you going to do a top-down tutorial? Yeah, we did some, but not exactly like in the past, not necessarily beginner friendly or very step-by-step. -step. That might be uh, the, the thing. Why well, this? script variables not the same as it's happening on stats.gd i wonder they they still have those bugs going with the the resources or i'm normally when i call get something it should return the okay wait 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 get actions and speed linear speed angular Okay, so normally if I go to stats, ship. Okay, so you have some base values here and normally it returns the result of get stat. Well, let's try it. Let's try things differently. If I do owner.get stat acceleration max. Well, I'm gonna go to Emacs, try that, so gonna go to uh, the move state there we go and so here I can do do this so uh, I'm gonna find the get function so get oh, but I need to capture that 
All right. And so now I can do uh, get stats. That's the yeah. Uh, get stats, and I'm gonna go like that and that, and there we go. Should work now. Okay. Mm -hmm. The cache is incorrect. So it cached too early. That was the problem. I hadn't t tested that before. Okay. Um, I'm writing in ancient language. What's happening? I'm not sure. <laughs> Probably because I write uh, get something. Ah, no, it's uh, maybe the... Um, I was using said, so regular expressions. Oh, right. To refactor code. Um, okay, it's because... So I set everything... Uh, when do I, can I initialize the cache? Uh -huh, I see. Uh, it's the place I call update all, but I don't have a ready function in there on the stats node, so. Uh huh. Yeah, that's what I was saying. You remember I was talking to you about changing the stats instead of a resource, having an object, and then split things into a resource like the the stats you can edit in the inspector. Um, and you feed that into the stats. The problem is you don't have a ready function or something like that. So you have to either add a line. So you initialize the stats manually from, for example, the player ship. So stats dot initialize. Um, that was going to be my, my thought. Because the problem I have is the values change in the inspector. If at on init, I, I'm not getting these values from the scene. Instead, I'm getting the, the default value of the stats script. So in that case, stats ship. Yeah, in init, I update all. So I don't know what, what to do. It's not going to work. Um, <laughs> well, for now, I don't see a way around that. So without uh, rewriting the, the, the code in the system. So let's add an initialize function. So function initialize. And it's going to call update all. And so from the player ship, we're going to do doo -doo -doo -doo. first stats.initialize. So that adds some boilerplate, but well, that's how it is. It's fine. Uh, let's do the same for the cargo stats.initialize. Where else? Uh, the gun stats so stats that initialize and there we go now the stats value and the cache there we go it's the correct values so ladies and gentlemen we want to present you today on GD quest uh, something that should work so now we should have a ship that whoa 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 ship you count down okay it's gone out of the script out of the screen. Let's see, does it travel? Uh, now it might be a bit more like a spaceship, so it turns too fast and whoa, 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 at least it's funny. I can make nice loopings and all. I want a debug mode like that. Now it travels almost as fast as uh, projectiles. <laughs> okay, that was funny. Um, I want so the player stats to be angular acceleration. We're going to have it at 60. 
uh, angular speed max of course 300 was way too high linear speed max is going to be 800 and the acceleration max 300 let's try the game like that yeah your acceleration it we have to check if it's in pixels because the deceleration is is really soft and all the character almost instantly goes to the max because an acceleration of 15 pixels per sec it's in pixels per second squared right it's supposed to be did this called crash it might have yeah someone was telling me that this called would crash turns out wow. <laughs> yeah discord crashed it's not not my fault this time it's discord that's not being nice to me hi jill it's it's been a long time uh yeah i was saying the uh acceleration linear acceleration we have to check because it's not in pixels per second you have a value of 15 that makes the character smoothly accelerates if i crank it up to 300 so 300 pixels per second squared uh, it almost instantly gets to its max speed of 800 pixels per second. Hmm. I mean, the math should equate to pixel movement, basically. Because that's how movement slide works internally. Wait, wait, wait. And in on the map it should equate to as in in the framework when you apply uh, a velocity of 800 on the x it should move 800 pixels times delta per second yeah you you don't apply delta right yeah i don't know only uh, the, but uh, in the only in when you use you apply the acceleration you use delta though right uh, there should be. Yeah, because that might that might explain if you don't if you forgot the times delta and the acceleration, or something like that. That might explain the the effect. Because it really feels like it's framework. Normally, to get that kind of acceleration, I should have a value like two thousand or something. Uh. What do you guys think? Do, does it look good now? That kind of maneuver, maneuverability? It might be a bit too fast. So I'll go crank it back down to 600. Um, or 700. Let's test on the on the actual game map. Come on, Godot. Don't do that. Yeah, do I think I just add it straight up. Though. Hmm. Yeah, you, you need the, multi the multiplication by delta. Because um, otherwise you don't convert from acceleration is in a, a squared divided by time squared, right? Unit. Mm -hmm. And then velocity is in time unit. So I'll issue a fix to this and to um... Now I can evade the project. When the projectiles fade, it's amazing. Yeah, Jill, it's it's really fast, but it's funny. That's the thing. Okay, it's way too fast. Um, so from here, I should be able to open the stats and we're going to change them so for now, I'm gonna go back to 25 and a uh, max linear speed of 550. Angular speed I'll max is. Fix the framework and then update this one's version. Okay. Why is it putting the window in the background now? So I really I have to. I noticed that sometimes Godot just sort of forgets to. Uh... Even teasing the enemies. Hmm. 
It's funny the way they, they fade the projectiles. Yeah, it's kind of bullet hell right now. But we have to change the projectiles on the enemies as well. Uh, definitely. Hmm. It's been an hour and 30 minutes. Yeah, we don't make... Already? I don't make that much progress in the, in the live streams. All right. Uh... Hey, TD, okay, uh, control schemes, so I want to test, uh, I'm going to, well, maybe it's still a, a tad bit too fast, so let's go for IT, um, the changing of the control scheme might be Yeah, it really depends on the game feel that we want to have in the end. Of course. Uh, Henrique, if you're still uh, on the stream, um, one thing that we really have to change is that blue pop effect. Right now it's a, it's a script. I know you're you're already on it, um, Francois, or should Henry K take care I of it? I was going to add an actual explosion effect. Okay. But I don't know if Henry K wants to do it instead. Well, if you're working on shaders, it's with a shader the the explosion might look better. Um, okay, so I'd crank that up to two hundred, and that should be fine. Uh, yeah, the acceleration, if we get it down. No, I don't want, I want it to be on the game scene. Yeah, I'm writing defix to the framework right now. Yeah, I know it's too slow for me. I mean, I like fast stuff as well. So then we'll need to get some people testing uh, in the community, um, the look at popeffect.gd. It's it's really from the very beginnings of the prototype. So it's like uh, a script that makes that draws some small lines like blue purple for from when there was no background in the game. So if I kill when I died, there was that effect on the screen. Uh, ah, Gilles tried the game. He's like, I've just tried the current Git GitHub version. The game looks promising. So just so you know, uh, Gilles and people who are watching, this game is once again a tool for learning. So it's showing how to write professional game code. And uh, we have, so Francois here, who's been working on it. And he's uh, an industry veteran. Like you've been a developer for what, 20 years? Uh, it's getting there. Um, well, no, not uh, well. More, I've been professional developer for like ten years or so. Well, I, twelve, thirteen, maybe. But I've been uh, developing stuff for close to two, two decades now. So there you go. And he's worked as an AI specialist in um, in a game. Well, more than one game studio. I don't know for how long, because you you started as a generalist, right? A uh, general yeah. game developer, and then you did AI at the end in in your last job only, or more than that? Uh, mainly in my last job, it was uh, on the Universe Projects game Void Space. They needed, they wanted me to uh, kind of spruce up the uh, the way their AI were working, which was not at all. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so I came up with a way to to have the AI do pathfinding around asteroids, catch up to you. And use uh, GDX AI's the uh, LibGDX AI framework, which inspired this Godot framework. Okay, I'm increasing the aggro area from the monsters, uh, and finally, the gun of the monsters is really the gun gun, right? So I think I'm gonna make a new gun for the enemies inherited from gun. So right click, we do new inherited scene. Perfect. Uh, it's going to be pirate gun. Oh, where is the bullet? Uh, and I'm going 
going to duplicate that and it's going to be pirate gun stats. And uh, pirate gun stats, we're going to move to the pirates, so ships, enemies, pirate. There we go. So now we can lower the damage on the enemy and we can increase the damage on the player. So it's going to be 8 for the player, cool down 0.2. For the, the pirates, they are going to shoot slower, so 0.5, in part because they are much stronger. The spread is going to be much lower as well, with value of 5 uh, degrees, maybe 10. I don't know, so 5. And for the player, we can have a larger spread, like of... Let's try 12 degrees. It's a very narrow cone, but it gives you kind of the area you will cover on the screen provided that the cooldown is um, is low enough. Maybe let's try 20. I'm not sure what would work best. So I'm increasing the aggro area and then I'm going to give them a different uh, projectile. So where do you come from, my friend? You're the plasma shot. We have the plasma shot for the player. Okay. So the plasma shot, we're going to make it like the base one, much smaller. What's best? What do you think, um, Francois, should I make inherited scenes from the plasma shot for the enemy and the player? Like I was thinking, I want to scale it down for the enemy compared to the player. Yeah, um, probably, yeah. Yeah, I uh, can try with The only thing uh, is to keep me, uh, make sure that the... Uh, if you're gonna tweak the shader, you need to make the material unique. Otherwise, yeah. it just shares okay. the uh, parameters. No problem. This music reminds me of Bound Japan because uh, the video I made about Japan had this music. Um, I don't know if people can hear the music in the background. I tried to put it really low. I had some complaints, let's say, in the past that uh, uh, it could be a bit too loud. So better yeah. too low than too loud, honestly. I haven't heard anyone complain about it. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's people don't like you might have one or two persons mention it. But you will have people dropping on this uh, the um, the stream and dropping then because they don't like the music or something, and they may not say it. So I try to be wary of that. Uh, okay, so the enemy has the gun. I should really sanitize that later. Uh, have the uh, default stats for the gun. Uh, so I think I called everything pirate. Pirate gun stats. And pirate. I ah, know the projectile is enemy projectile. Plasma shot enemy. Okay. Or oh, it looks even bigger. Uh, edit? No. Ah, the other thing is, yeah, things like collision shape have uh, shapes. So I need to make it unique at least. Okay, let's see if it works. There is more noise than music, to be honest. Uh, like, you mean microphone noise? Uh, ambient noise? Like white noise in the background. Okay, it's with it should be this this mic that's in use. Uh, the enemies shoot like really in waves. Um, maybe I have to add some randomness in the. Ah, it's a computer fan indeed. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have the more professional system like before, uh, like back in front. So 
I don't have a norm that I can put to. Plus, it's like always summer here, so it's not too hot, but it might be 25 degrees. Yeah, I know, as Jill was saying, it's the computer's fan is pretty close to the microphone. So even if it's directional, I mean, it's going to pick it up. And the music is really low, so. Yeah, it's more balanced already. Whoa, now in, in um, precision mode, it goes really fast. It's <laughs> Um, I'll have to work on that separately. Okay, the mining speed is too low for me. I, I would prefer the Congo to, especially the first wave, to load really fast. We might have to, to discuss that because it depends on the... I mean, we have a, certainly a different taste for games, for design and all. Um, I'm all for a very fast early loop and not necessarily slowing down the game but making the game harder as you progress right mm -hmm. um but so early on i would have the player mine quickly and get the first upgrades quickly and even be uh right now i'm i'm changing the the balance so that the player is really fast at the beginning so for people testing the demo they open it and it instantly feels good but if we start to do game progression then um I would do it a, a bit differently. I would do it first accessories very close to the base. And as you progress, you unlock really quickly like a thruster to go far. So the ship moves slowly, but if you use the thruster, you don't have, you can't move too much to the sides, but um, uh, you move very fast forward, right? I would handle it some, yeah. somewhat like that. Um, all right, so we have that with the enemies. It's better. I'm going to, okay, I'm going to say uh, the control scheme. I can't change it right now, but at least the game feels a bit faster, right? Something strange. Why does it land on the comet's edges instead of its center as a top-down perspective? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't look strange to me. It looks fine. Yeah, I mean, they're obstacles, so you can't run into them. Yeah, also. Like, they block you. Uh, okay. I'm going to have... Ah, yeah, that I can remove. That should work. Uh, that I change. Uh, that should be it too. Okay, I have to just indicate on stats.gd that you have to... Um, So you must call initialize to initialize the stats value when you're seen uh, the objects uh, to initialize the objects values when you're seen if you modify the resource through Godot's inspector. Otherwise, it, it should be fine. The values will be correct from the start, but ah no, they won't. They won't be cached. You must call initialize to initialize the objects. Uh, uh, values. The, this the um, stats values. This ensures uh, ensures that uh, they are in sync. The 
values uh, modified in Godot. Uh, Godot's inspector. I don't know why on init, like the resource has different values on init than the one you set, the ones you set through the inspector. It's really strange to me. Yeah, I have to wet garbage value. Like in uh, in classic C. Uh, although it shouldn't apply to C++, but in classic C, if you didn't initialize your struct, uh, you weren't guaranteed to have zeros in your data. I see, but in that case, it's really... You modify the um, resource through the inspector, and on init, on the init built-in uh, callback, so it, it's it's um, like a function on, on the engine. I mean, it's not like... The actual well, the way the engine works is uh, it creates it, then it calls, so in it happens, then it calls the setters for each property, and then mm -hmm. it adds it to the tree. I see. But then it's not using the values in the TRS file for the resource. Instead, it's using the default values of the variables. Yeah, that's, it's not very convenient. If anyone knows about a bug like that, the values on resources are gathered from the serialization after the init. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I'm saying, and that's exactly the problem I have. To me, if you're modifying the, val the um, properties in the inspector, uh, I would expect them just like on nodes, on nodes at the init time. If you modify properties in the inspector, um, and you at load time on init you have the values you put in the inspector uh i will buy your 2d action game course pro version do you have any advice to follow it uh just be sure that um you uh, the course is for Godot 3.0, so uh, there are some. There's a video that explains the the differences in the source code, but you can't just open the the examples in Godot 3.2. If you want your um, if you want courses for Godot 3.2, uh, Godot 3.2 courses. You have to go on our new courses. Uh, yeah, Gilles, so I, Gilles is saying init is the first thing ran on an object. So this is kind of expected. Yeah, but why do on nodes uh, init has the values serialized on the object? Or is it because we we work with ready on, on nodes? I haven't worked with object. Yeah, objects, you don't modify them through... Okay, so this is just that resources don't have something like ready. Yeah, they're they're acting like references. Yeah, I see. Yeah, so then we can't do we can't work around having an initialize function. We could call deferred uh, from init. Yeah, but call deferred based on what, you know. Uh, Called effort lives on object. I oh, know, is it? Called effort, yeah, it's on object, so it should be able to act on. No, I mean the, we we defer, but we at what time do do we call it? Because oh yeah, you don't have the owner on in it. Uh, you set whatever you need that's in it specific to the creation of the object. Yeah, you call defer a setup function that lives on the object, and then that setup. By now, the, a frame has gone by, and you can then uh, do whatever you need. Uh, ah, you can wait for for a frame. Yeah. Let me try that. Uh, and it's called even before crazy object, then serialize the values stored in the resources. Just test it, and it doesn't gather. Then add it to the tree, then call ready. Okay, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, okay, it makes sense. Um, then the question is here on the stats, so let's see. I'm having to rebalance all the demos <laughs> for the framework. 
Yeah. Yeah, it changed like that. Everyone, everything was uh, super <coughs> slow. Yeah, that's normal. Um, you can just multiply all the values by 60. And in the inspector, you can enter time 60, and normally it should multiply them. Yeah, um, it's just that I have uh, added ranges, so that they're easy to edit, so I have to tweak those as well. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, let me see. So I'm going to go back to stats.gd. I'm going to call call effort. And it's going to be uh, update all. Come on, update all. What does call effort do? Uh, no, no, call effort set position to something during idle time. Parameters are, are passed as a comma separated variable. Let's see if it works. So going to do that and then I'm going to print the cache. Ah, yeah, of course. Uh, I'm going to yield get tree. Do you have it? Get something. Okay, not going to do that. So instead, I'm going to go to the player ship. And when I initialize the stats, instead, I'm going to... Um, Get tree, next frame, uh, frame, idle frame, and I'm going to, uh, it might not like that, I think I'll go down at the bottom, so wait for a frame and print stats dot cache. 60, 200, 150, 100, and yes, my friend, this is working. Uh, although we will have to, uh, the internet is a bit unstable here. We'll have to ensure that we don't pull the values too early on as well. Because if we have to wait for one frame, uh, I, I'm going to check if this works, like really, because you might, want to you might need to be careful to ensure that the um, the stats are ready so maybe then I, I can add something like on the stats um, I can add a ready signal signal ready and emit it so emit signal Ready. And until ready, you are not ready to use the stats. And then I can do this and go look for, well, I'm gonna go back to my friend Emacs and um, uh, someone's asking, can I follow the course with 3.2? I've watched all your courses and the best I've seen is the one there. Uh, you can follow the the course with Godot 3.2, so that old course. Um, but uh, ju just note that you will have to change some code. So you have to be comfortable enough with programming. Like it's it's not beginner friendly. If you've watched everything, I think that yes, you should be able to to do so. I know that. So far, most people who got it have been really happy with it. I mean, you can see the, the ratings on Gumroad. It's, uh, uh, we have one or two persons who set low ratings, but the, the average is, is really high. Um, I've refunded a few persons, especially beginners who bought the course, who were like, no, I, I can't follow this. It's too complicated. Um, even back when it was after the Godot 3.0 release, so... Right. Uh, anyway, uh, search the project for initialize. Uh, okay, I'm going to look for stats. And there we go. I'm going to, well, remove that. 
There we go, and that should be fine. Hmm, didn't find them all. Did I mess up my... Yeah, bingo. That's what's happening. So now we have to do things differently. So you have to... You have to wait for the, um, the stats to be ready in that case. Uh, if you use Godot for three months, it depends if you have programming experience. You know, you know what? There's a um, refund uh, warranty. So you uh, just send me a message on Discord, on Twitter, like private message with your email if the course doesn't work for you and I will refund you instantly. So that way you can try, see if it works and if it doesn't, well, it, it does take one or two days to for the refund to get back on your bank account, but um, we have that kind of policy. When people message me, I, I refund them. It, it's even written on the course page. That way you don't risk, you don't risk anything um, if you want to, to try it. I think that's the best way because the, the thing is we don't have the budget or is this called gone again? Okay, this called crashed again. Sorry, it seems there was another Discord crash. Oh, that's why I was quiet. <laughs> Uh, Andre, the Metroidvania course is going to be expanded along the 2D course, either in the new or updated, since the idea was to create a Metroidvania. I guess some systems would later be introduced, right? Yeah, but no, because it, it doesn't sell, like, at all. So, uh, it's... Basically, we would be making it for... Now, at this point, for almost nothing. I think a lot of people back the Kickstarter for 3D content and those kinds of things. And now we are at the point where we have to do a new project. Uh. The previous course got really big, like the 2017 um, uh, course, because uh, it sold well and it allowed me to hire uh, Razaric now and uh, Henrique and the people who are working at GD Quest regularly. So we made money after the, the Kickstarter. And but no, like the, the platformer 2D, uh, totally not. So yeah, unfortunately, uh, I, w I wanted to add more. Well, there's a follow up course, but it's it that's on the way, but it is still about platforming mechanics. And the things like the, the thing I can do is on the channel or something like that, make videos about how we do the portal system, how we do level design and those kinds of things. But making them as a paid product, the, the problem is that it makes really few sales and I have uh, support to do and it basically costs us more time than uh, like we do it at a loss, really. So we might as well work on free software projects and uh, the, the next project. And in general, uh, it's lessons learned for the next Kickstarter. The first Godot Kickstarter was really uh, successful, not only the Kickstarter, but the product sold after that. Um, and so in the follow-up, I did something pretty long again. There were some problems starting to work as a team as well, like this year, uh, last year. So clearly there, there were issues with the Kickstarter campaign. Um, but overall, we, we put out uh, a lot of content. Now the thing is, uh, yeah, I expected following the Kickstarter campaign that the um, courses would also sell. And now it's not the case. So yeah, our revenue went down basically since last year, which is now with a team, it's not good. Like I mean, to be to be transparent, it's the um, money we make, be it me or Francois here or something, it's low for developers. It's really low. Like if I worked at a company, my salary would instantly triple, honestly. Would be nice, but yeah. 
Yeah, it, it is a labor of love in part because it's just yeah making games just so much more fun than making software uh well if you go into web engineering your salary can be multiplied by 10 but that's another story um <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the thing. But I think that if we do shorter projects and more crowdfunding moving forward, we can we can manage to um, get a decent revenue. And right now, we basically make just the, the money. I mean, personally, I can't complain. I don't have high expenses, but I do want to be able to pay my teammates also uh, what their work is worth. Right. Yeah, the cold effort, so on the stats, has one problem now. It's that uh, uh, when other nodes access the stats, basically the, the values are zero. Oh, because, yeah, that makes sense. Because uh, it goes, it caches the values, uh, even if you have the properties, anyway, the properties would not be up to date. But now the, the um, compound values are not available. Hmm. So uh, it's the same. Instead of explicitly calling initialize, instead you subscribe to the ready signal of the stats if you have the call deferred, and then you have more lines of code essentially saying you need to call deferred, and then when the stats are ready, <coughs> you assign the values, you know? Yeah. Uh, Gilles is saying, note that we discussed with the core developers about what to do with the Patreon money since Reduce and Vnen might move to the Mega Grant money. Yeah. Um, I mean, for us, well, self-funded. So the, the, the thing is, we kind of do our thing uh, and contribute what we can and contribute to the ecosystem around Godot. And... Um, the core developers who are already really busy don't have to worry about what we do. It's hopefully beneficial to Godot. It brings people. But um, yeah, we um, we do our thing, kind of. And part of the money might be used for improving the docs. Uh, this is something we can do. I know that also Aaron Frank is available and right now uh, Kalinou Hugo Lorcio, he's uh, in an internship. Was he or employed? I don't remember if he's finishing his studies or something like that. Might be available to work on that as well. Um, to be honest, I've thought about saying, we've talked with um, um, Remy and Juan already, I've said if you don't find anyone to take care of education around Godot, I can help. Um, and and yeah, it's, they, they didn't follow, they say, well, try to find the community because we're already doing other things anyway. Uh, and we'll message you if that's the case. Uh, Juan wanted me to help with making an open Godot game project, like official Godot with Blender. Uh, this is this has moved forward slowly. This might happen, um, but I'm really just helping to say, you know, game concept ideas or things like these, based on his his request so far. Um, Hiring us on the docs, I mean, why not? But I'm thinking maybe they are a better, better person to, to take care of it. Uh, what about using the reactive observer pattern with chaining to get that cache state? Uh, yes, that's, that's essentially what we have here with the ready signal. So things can subscribe to it and um, get the stats at this point. But uh, but it's instead of calling an initialize function, it's just more lines of code, essentially. Like that. So let's see, I'm going to stage that. And uh, as you can hear, young and delicate people, I'm starting to get um, uh, a bit sidetracked. They've gone back to work. <laughs> yeah. Essentially, that's what I, I tell the team pretty much every time. 
like, hey, going back to work. Even though the meetings we have is work. So add initialize method to stats, it's going to uh, ensures that uh, the, um, the serialized values uh, um, we need to uh, delay the caching of the, the final stats to ensure uh, that the serialized values from the resource are uh, loaded. We tried using called effort. Uh, yeah, anyway, it's fine. Tried using called effort, but uh, it requires more boilerplate. Uh, something like pipe map with latest from. Yeah, but the, the thing is, um, GDScript is really, right now you don't have anything functional in the, in the language. This will come with Godot 4.0. And even then, I don't know, we will have first class functions, but we will have to see. Um, it's, you would need a lot of boilerplate to have something like that. Yes, you can implement those functions in GDScript and all, but it's just adding boilerplate to work around the way Godot works. And for me, that's not something I would use, I would do. Uh, okay, so we want to have this, plasma gun shot, pirate gun and the pirate ship is updated. Um, I did the ship already. Player, player stats. Okay, so I think I'll just split the two. Uh, balance the weapon stats for the player and the enemy. Uh, summary line is not too long, my friend. Uh, and I think I'm going to say this closes um, or Stylix. Come here. I have one, two. That's a bit of a mess again. All right. Uh, I'm going to go uh, hub issues and what I have hub issues slash assignee should be me and it's and menus make it easier to hit how uh, when they are banking on metal like that it's such a pleasure um, <laughs> how long are they going to be what are they building actually I don't know a building something I mean, I really, the guys here on construction sites, they uh, do not wear anything like earplugs or everything. They are really in the noise. And they are sh shouting to one another, like to, to, to talk. Like there's no protection here. It's impressive. Um, people are deaf, like m my partner was telling me, uh, people are, are really deaf in Costa Rica, but it's impressive sometimes, the amount of noise. So I can't, I have a hard time with concerts and things like these here. For me, it's, yeah, it can be a bit painful. Um, uh, this is going to be closes 18 for now, but even if we do more work to balance the game later, uh, this is this is it for now. I'm sorry, people, but I'm going to close the stream. If you have any questions, of course, uh, we are here to answer them before we leave. So tell us. And this is what the game looks like at the moment. So the player ship is a bit faster, and more importantly, it's easier to move around. Uh, so I'm going to take the the um, gamepad for that. Um, you won't see the enemies spawn by default in the game, but there you go. We have our plasma shots in. They don't have impact yet. 
uh, the effect still needs to be done. The player is pretty weak. Maybe the enemies shouldn't have the plasma shot. Might have the lasers that Henrique uh, has been working on. Um, okay, I died. But so we balanced the game. We refactored some of the code. You can find the game on um, GitHub. I'm going to link to it. So it's go to the game harvester here. Here is a link to the game and I'm counting on you. Uh, please start the repository if you like the project. Oh, and Andre, sorry, uh, uh, your reply not quitting my day job as a game artist since it would be too risky. Ah, you understand. Um, yeah, the recent 2D course was uh, meant to be a module for the Metroidvania project, definitely. But yeah, that's unfortunately, um, we didn't get to do everything I would have liked to do. The, the project took time to get started. Uh, I ended up, was supposed to be two on the project. I ended up doing it alone. Uh, and it was hard to, I was a bit reluctant to take someone to do videos with me on the project itself as a result afterwards. Then I contracted a few persons with whom it didn't work uh, in 2019. Like that was before working with Francois and Henrique was uh, working on his project. So he wasn't available like full time to work on it, like the um, kitchen tales and those kinds of things. So there's been quite a lot of stuff happening. And when you lose time like that, you also end up losing money. Um, Okay, anyway, that's what the game looks like for now. You have a link to get it on GitHub. And if there aren't more questions, I'm going to close the stream. Is there anything you want to say or show, uh, Francois? Uh, nothing right now. Just, uh, I've been, I've just finished uh, updating the framework. So that'll be that. <laughs> Perfect. Um, could you write in the, in the change log? Cause that's going to be a breaking change, right? Yep. Uh, no, it's uh, it's just a dating values. I mean, it'll be breaking that uh, uh, you need yeah. to uh, update oh, need the to API change itself that. and change just the values. Yeah. Yeah. All good. Well, we should just have it in the in the yeah, change log. Yeah, I'm writing. I'm, I'm adding to the change log as well. Ah, and by the way, people, I almost forgot to say it. This game is open for contributions. We have the code style guide and also uh, really if people want to help, you want to, to make improvements to the games, to the controls and all, uh, it's, it's super welcome. See that those UIs, for example, they need to be redesigned. Uh, the controls are a bit bugged right now on the upgrade UI. I need to file a bug for that. Um, so really we're going to start those projects that we talked about. We want to uh, make them contribution friendly so we can have community driven open game projects. We kickstart the projects. Uh, we do the heavy lifting at the beginning uh, because anyway, that's, that's how it works. You really need the project to be up with quite a bit of content to, um, to make it easy to contribute because you have people from all around the world coming just to do 10 lines of code here, a hundred lines of code there. So the, really the meat of the gameplay, uh, it needs to be directed, right, to, to feel good. Uh, okay, I'm just going to file that bug before I forget. So upgrade menu, uh, can't navigate. Upgrade menu with the arrow keys. Um, the upgrade menu uh, doesn't work. Yeah, the neighbors aren't set correctly. The D pad. I had removed them because normally, if it's in a list by default, um, I tested the change as well. And when they are unset, Koto automatically finds the neighbors based on the location of the um, of the control nodes. So that's why. But they, even if they are not exactly in a in the list of nodes, it really takes all the control nodes, uh, and it that have um, neighbors and it checks by position. You only set the focus neighbors when um, you when you need something a bit more custom or the default, for example, you have something that's a bit 
up and right and a bit up and left and you press up and it goes up right because it's the closest note but you want to go up and left it's those kinds of things where you need the focus neighbors when you do a graph for example in UI it uh, doesn't work when using the d-pad and I'm going to file that as a bug anyway uh, okay no questions and there you go I'm going to yeah. end it there. Um, do you want to say some last word? Um, bury me with my money. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining. We'll see one another in the next video, next stream. And I'll try to do some uh, code overview videos from the projects, from the things that we figure out with Godot, the systems that you could reuse that could be useful in your games. It's going to be overviews, like running you down through the code and one example rather than step by step because we're dealing with complex code. So we can't teach every step. But with that, thank you very much for joining. Uh, be creative, have fun. Let's see one another in the next one. Bye-bye.